Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! France is not the only country to be welcoming a string of British ministers. New Zealand hosts the Scottish Secretary today. He is the third member of the Cabinet to visit in recent months. Why? Because ministers say it is one of the first countries that Britain will be able to sign a free trade deal with, you guessed it, after Brexit. David Mundell, the Scotland Secretary, joined us on the line from Christchurch in New Zealand. Good morning to you. Good morning, Nick. And what are they saying to you about the prospects of such a deal? They're very positive about uh, entering a free trade agreement uh, with the UK here uh, in New Zealand. I've met with the Trade Minister, I've met with uh, opposition politicians uh, who, who might be uh, in charge in, in the future, and everybody sees uh, the post-Brexit environment with the UK able to enter uh, these trade arrangements as a really positive thing uh, for New Zealand. So part of uh, my uh, visit here is about rolling uh, the pitch ahead of beginning uh, detailed negotiations about uh, such an agreement and of course uh, Liam Fox recently announced in the, our parliament that we were going to begin a consultation on doing just that. What is it that we don't currently sell to New Zealand that we might be able to sell post-Brexit? It's about selling things that, that we already do in, in, in greater quantities, but there are But, but isn't the honest uh, answer that nothing at all? There is nothing that we can't sell to New Zealand in terms of goods and services that we can't already sell to New Zealand. What we can do, though, in a, in a, a, a trade arrangement uh, with New Zealand, unlike the arrangements that we have through the EU, is to have a more uh, bespoke arrangement which looks at a, the, the specific trading arrangements between uh, the UK and uh, New Zealand. And I'm, I not, think I'm not that clear who will that benefit. Uh, if it, OK, bespoke in what way? Which business, which sector will suddenly go, ah, now I can do business with New Zealand. I've not been able to do that before. I think that sectors will be able to say, I can do more uh, business uh, with New Zealand. For I'm example, one of the things I'm, why. Why one, one of the things I'm heavily uh, promoting whilst I'm here uh, is, is the agri-tech uh, sector, which is one in which uh, Scotland in particular uh, is a world leader around uh, Edinburgh University, and that's the ability to bring technology to bear on agricultural uh, uh, developments in terms of uh, getting greater crop yields, in terms of uh, getting uh, greater um, animal husbandry to uh, increase production. And that's, you know, that's an area in which the, the, there is considerable uh, excitement here. But at, at being that, able, that would only work, uh, wouldn't it, if we were not following... Sorry, forgive me, I just want, I want to clarify, I wasn't trying to interrupt you. But that would only work if we weren't following a common rule book. If, as the Chequers deal says, there's a common rule book for agri-goods, that's the phrase that is used, um, surely you can't then go to New Zealand and say, look, we'll do things a bit differently in the future from how we're doing it now. We'll do things exactly the same under the Chequers proposal. And therefore, I just put it to you again, I, I'm still not hearing anything in terms of trade that we will be able to do in the future that we can't already do. The Chequers arrangement does allow for there to be uh, different arrangements with uh, countries out with uh, the EU in terms of the arrangements that, that we can make. And what what the position is at the moment is in relation to uh, the specific uh, deals that are done uh, through the EU. Those are EU-wide uh, deals. Often they take into account a whole range of factors over the EU uh, as, as a whole, rather than than uh, focusing on the very specifics that affect the, the United Kingdom. And that's, that's what we're going to look for in the sort of free trade agreements that we will seek post-Brexit. This is a tiny uh, possibility in terms of trade, though, isn't it? Uh, New Zealand is the 50th largest economy in the world. Our trade with them is just over a billion pounds, compared with our trade with the EU of 240 billion pounds. 
the Chequers Agreement makes it very clear that we want to continue our trading uh, relation uh, with the EU in relation to goods and agri-products and indeed to enter into uh, a whole range of other uh, agreements in relation to services, for example. And I think you know it's very, very important that we make clear that leaving uh, the EU isn't about, uh, isn't about not continuing to trade uh, with the EU. We made very clear that we want to do that. But we okay. also want uh, to have the ability to enter into our own specific uh, free trade agreements, the bespoke uh, free trade uh, agreements that meet our uh, needs with other countries around the world. David Mundell, Scotland Secretary, thank you for taking the time to join us.